Okay guys, so the topic I want to go over with you is um, the topic of, who, who, first of all, who wants their life to be prospered? Like, what the Bible taught, I mean, true prosperity. Now I know in the world sense they say prosperity is... Money, riches, big yeah, house, having, lots of cars. Yeah, how much stuff you get. But I know people who have all those things, prosperity in the, in the material sense, and they're miserable. If your stuff gets in the way of you being able to just enjoy other people, then it's not true prosperity. True prosperity is being able to have stuff that you enjoy with other people. That's when it's really, you know, in the sense of biblical prosperity is having those things that you can actually share and you can enjoy them with others, not feeling like they're going to rip me off or they're going to take it from me and I have to worry. But I was telling Torin, I learned about prosperity um, in Psalm 1 about how to be a man that truly prospers and I want to show you in the psalm it talks about how if you do certain things you will prosper okay in whatever you do it's not just like a little bit of prosperity this is prosperity in the fullest sense in whatever you do you're gonna prosper okay if you really want to be blessed in everything you do pay attention to these first verses okay the verses that lead up to, to to the end of verse 3 that says you'll be prospered in whatever you do. So you've got to learn two verses. Verse 1 and verse 2. They're easy. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of what? The ungodly. The ungodly or the wicked. And so and it says, Nor will you be blessed if you stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Or, or the King James says, in the seat of scornful. Now, scornful, when someone scorns you, what are they doing? Or scoffs at you. What is it when someone... Have you guys ever had someone scoff at you? You know what that means? Yeah. I can't believe you. You're so this stupid. Guy. You're so... What an idiot, you know? They, oh, and they and they oh, mock you. That's Christian. scoffing, okay? And and when they do that to you... Hang you how do you feel anyway when someone does that to you? Bad. That, yeah. It's terrible. I feel so warm and but, fuzzy inside. But if you really want to have a blessed well, life... Like hot, it says, rain. don't sit in the seat of the scornful or of the scoffer. Don't hang out with them. If you've got someone that always scoffs at you, should you spend your time with them? No. No, because it's just going to tear you down. Now, it does tell you where you should hang out in the next verse. Look at verse 2. It says, but instead, to be blessed, it says, you should have your delight in the law of the Lord. And in his law, it says, you meditate day and night. You know, meditate means to mull it over in your mind. You think over, what's God's law? What, what, what command did Jesus give us? That new commandment we studied on Sunday. Love, name. Love one another. And Love God. Yeah, the first one he said, what we looked at when the attorney tested him was, Love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second was like the first, love your neighbor with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your... Right? So if you really want to be blessed, you need to mull over day and night, what does God's word say to do? What's his commands? What's his law teach us? And his law, guys, his law is good for our spirit. When we think over the things all the time about what God wants me to do, when I start doing that, instead of hanging out with guys that are trying to get me into the council of wickedness and sitting in seats with the, uh, and being scorned, Instead, I might dig out. I'm not going there. I'm not going to hang out in the path of sinners. Instead, I'm going to delight in the Lord. It says, if you do that, you will be like a man, uh, uh, well, you'll be like a tree which is firmly planted by the streams of water. And you'll yield fruit in each season, and your leaf will not wither. And whatever he does, it says, you will prosper. Now, what's the big deal about a tree being planted by a river? What, what, why is that such a big deal? It's going to get lots of water. You get plenty of nutrients, right? You don't ever have to worry about running out of nutrients. Yeah, it says your leaf never withers, and you will become fruitful, which we've been studying about 
in the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians. Finally and, done and with that chapter. Finished chapter 5. After Galatians, nine yeah. weeks. Over and two and you, you will become fruitful. And it says you'll prosper in whatever you do. From the Caymans out to Honolulu. The living rhythm is a